So yesterday we talked about how uh, maybe a new Jewish uh, generation would perceive uh, God, and even if the Messiah came tomorrow, what would it look like um, as a, a new kingship of Israel? What I want to do today is take that spirit of what the future would look like and how I would imagine it to look like. Um, and it's something that I titled a shul with a pool. Yeah. And <clears throat> so what I'd like to, to, uh, to look at is maybe how would a, a community would look if we now take Tiferet Israel and move it to, to the next step. And as we are looking for new leadership in the synagogue too, to kind of build uh, the next generation of leadership, how would a new generation of congregants would look? So I learned a few things in uh, my tenure here, literally 10 years. It takes all kinds, number one. Number two, everything is relationship. Number three, everything is connected to everything. Mm -hmm. And number four is everybody is connected to everybody. So this idea of a community, a, a flock, you know, a king cannot have uh, be a king without people. A uh, shepherd cannot be a shepherd without a flock. So how would that uh, flock live, to, live together if we are all kinds and everything is relationship and we understand that everybody is connected to everybody and everything is connected to everything? Um, how, how can we do that in the next generation? So... Um, You know, when we talk about God as a, as a parent and we pray um, that you are our king, but also a father and a parent. So avinu malkeinu when we say that. And a parent comes first. Avinu is first. And the first wish of a parent is that their children would be able to dwell together. But we are so different. On Passover, we read about the four types of children sitting around the table. The Talmud points out those four types as they appear in different biblical uh, verses, the wise, the wicked, the simple, and the one who does not know how to ask. But there's a beautiful comment that I heard from one of my rabbis when I went to Yeshiva University, and he said, you know, the real wicked person, the real wicked child, uh, so to speak, is the one that didn't even bother coming to the table. So, uh, of course, in our context, you know, they're not wicked that way. It's just that um, it means that they're maybe not connected to our uh, synagogue or to any uh, Jewish organization in their, in their area. I, you know, I can understand people who also do not want to affiliate. Uh, there's a lot out there, and we compete with a lot of other interests. But one of the original ideas uh, that combine those who have this desire to worship and to pray and those who don't, they're, they're secular or they, uh, they don't really um, believe, they don't believe in God. So what do we do? Are they they're still Jewish? They're still our, uh, our family? So what do we do? So one of the original ideas um, was to combine the religious with the secular was actually Yeshiva University um, it was one of the first institutions in the late 19th century to implement the idea of Torah with Derech Eretz. Torah with Derech Eretz is the, uh, the way of the world. So any secular studies and secular, uh, not so much activities yet, but it really the study. Um, later on, the idea of a shul with a pool, uh, this phenomenon became popular in America in the early 20th century. In his book, Shore with the Pool, the Synagogue Center in American Jewish History, David Kaufman credits the Synagogue Center idea to Henry Berkowitz, uh, who lived between 1857 and 1924, so really early 20th century, 
a member of the first graduating class of the Hebrew Union College. Performed. In, in 1883. The principal problem Berkowitz and other early HUC graduates of the day uh, faced was a serious drop in synagogue attendance, Kaufman wrote. And open quote, our Jewish congregations have gradually surrendered their influence to the social clubs. He promote um, an auxiliary umbrella organization formed in the late 19th century to oversee non-religious activities within congregation marked the first attempt to develop a religious social synthesis in America, close quote. Um, the idea caught on in less than a generation and a Cleveland temple would become the first congregation in America to build its own gymnasium you can believe it wasn't that long ago. And you know, this is a, a you know, for thousands of years, we're battling this idea of secularism with uh, religious observance. And it started, of course, even with the Greeks, when in their uh, building of gymnasiums in Jerusalem and other places in Israel and influencing uh, other Jews who bought into that, for sure. So I don't think we ever left that model. Those Jews, uh, that, uh, that discussion kept going, only just separated. So when our shul, uh, next, uh, the next door neighbor, uh, our shul built a pool in their backyard, um, I toyed with the idea in my mind that if the synagogue wanted to expand, we could become a modern day shul with a pool. <laughs> Sounds cool. So where is this shul with a pool idea today? Uh, the acronym I came up with is SWAP, uh, it's a shul with a pool. Uh, but I think, I, as I decided to call it, um, is an acronym that alludes to its original spirit, an exchange between the shul and the pool, between the religious and the secular, a sort of separation between church and state within the shul. In essence, pretty much every synagogue today excluding perhaps ultra-Orthodox, is a variation of a shul with a pool. Synagogues designate separate spaces for prayer, study, and socializing. And maybe we forgot to distinguish between religious and secular and that people can have a choice. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting that we have the social hall here. And of course, we have the sanctuary. But people who uh, become members of the synagogue they assume that they, you know, uh, are expected to come to services, to religious services too. And maybe it does keep certain people uh, from becoming members because our community is much larger than, than our membership. And there are many people who are connected to our synagogue, but somehow are not making that step of becoming members, maybe perhaps because of that, because they, they think maybe they're expected to take the whole package um together so um the Talmud tells us in terms of you know it takes all kind as their faces sorry um yes um as their faces are different uh their views um are different so as uh, we are different, our view of a place of Jewish community, of course, is different. But perhaps um, what we can figure out is a different type of, uh, of membership. How would a futuristic affiliation to this type of synagogue look? So it would be an interesting to contemplate the future model of SWAM. But in the end, and this is really, and I hope we do, of course, study this and maybe uh, look into, into that in the next few years. But as I see it in my experience in, in the synagogue and seeing other places, um, at the end of the day, what matters is the pool of people, a pool of loving kindness, the pool as a symbol of good people coming together to develop <laughs> bonding relationships to maintain and grow them. Like the pool of Bethesda, uh, Chesed, it means uh, uh, 
loving kindness in ancient Jerusalem and its inspiration, the Bethesda fountain in Central Park, is surrounded by a beautiful circular pool. It meant for healing the city. At the end, in the end, it's about the infinite business of creating a community, growing round and going round and round year by year. It's the warmth of those who want to have a spiritual pool of healing water to all those who gather, gather around you. So as we are in, uh, in the month of Elul, and we say, I am for my beloved and my beloved is for me. I think that at the end of the day really is about the warmth in the heart. That really is what, cre what creates uh, communities, what grows uh, places. I think the people who know that this place is welcoming and warm, uh, I think this is really the most important component. And I think uh, people uh, feel that. And of course, there is much work to do still in the future. And I hope that we can all come together and, uh, and, and build that pool of people um, that gather around Shana Tovah.